I see so many people? Why am I muted? Oh yeah, look at those people. Those people, thank God. I was like, holy shit. Right, yes. Now we're talking. <laughs> I haven't seen some of these people in over a year. <laughs> All right, I think we're, um, let me grab my, I just lost my little, my, um, my bios. I'm, are we ready? Um, um, looks like a nice group. Um, thank you everyone um, for joining us. Um, so today we, um, I'm here as one of the curators for um, Current Undercurrent. And I would like to thank Linda Griggs and um, Sally Curcio for the opportunity. It is currently on view um, at the Hampton Gallery at, um, at University of Massachusetts Amherst. And um, I had 17 artists in my half and there was an, and pretty much a narrative about how um, things aren't changing. Like even though we think that, you know, we're doing, we're living through like new events, but like the feelings, the, um, the anxiety are on a continuum. And one thing I found in common with the work of Arlene Rush and Jamie and um, Giuliano Villani, um, these works were, um, these works I, um, for me captured the pandemic. Um, the early, these works um, came in the early pandemic when we were pretty much you know, washing our groceries and afraid of everything and just um, capturing that anxiety. And it's really interesting looking back on it. Like we made it, <laughs> we're still here, we're getting vaccinated. It was a whole different world. So let me start by introducing the artists. Jamie and Giuliana Villani um, is from Newark, New Jersey. Um, and lives and works in Brook up, lives and works in Brooklyn. Recent solo exhibitions include Mrs. Evan Williams at JTT in New York, Let's Kill Nicole at Massimo De Carlo in London. Sincerely Tony at Massimo De Carlo in Milan. The World's Greatest Planet on Earth at Studio Voltaire, London. Nudge the Judge at Tanya Layton in Berlin. And Detroit Affinities at the Museum of Contemporary Art, Detroit. Her work has recently been included in group shows at the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Jewish Museum, MoMA PS1, and the Brooklyn Museum, the Hammer Los Angeles, Kunsthalle Rotterdam, and the Maxi Museum in Rome. Arlene Rush is the conceptual multidisciplinary artist who challenges the theories used to classify her art. Rush's artistic journey confronts the under-acknowledged dialogues that have shaped society, feminist ideology, and our political engagement. Inquiries have pervaded her life on the issues of gender, identity, and equality. She has exhibited extensively in museums, universities, and galleries worldwide, and is represented by, I hope I pronounced this correctly, um, Ar Archile Archilesti or Archilesti? Uh, uh, you should have known. Archilesti, uh, yeah. Holberg. Archilesti, Ar 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 yeah. Um, oh, Fine Art New York. Rush was the recipient of a residency in Barcelona, Spain from the Center for Emerging Visual Artists in 1988 and of the Pat Hill and Colin Deland Foundation grant in 2011. In 2020, she received the Carol Eisner Award for Sculpture and was also published in Wikipedia, acknowledging both historically her artistic career and the tenacity she has towards creating work. Her work is in numerous collections. Some are Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, New York, New York, Museum of Modern Art, Wales, UK, Museo Brasileiro, uh, Brasileiro de Escultura, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Library of Congress, Thomas Jefferson Building, Washington, DC, Sarah M. Vance Waddle, um, Chicago, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, Joe Bales Collection, New York, Golden Collection in Berlin and the, and the Robert H. Cheney Collection in Houston, Texas and Arco Chemical in Newton Square, Pennsylvania. Thank you, um, Jamie and, and Arlene for joining me. No problem. And um, let's start with um, 
I think we're starting with Arlene's work. Um, so Arlene, this piece, I, I remember we were curating and just current undercurrent and we're just, you know, so, you know, this was definitely the current, but this image, you know, just hits you. It just like, it just resonated with me. It just, I think it captured just the, just the paranoia and the hoarding and the being trapped like a rat um, in our apartments. Um, and I just, this was one of the first things I thought of, like Arlene Rush, the toilet paper rolls. So can you um, tell us a little about the um, a passage of time? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I thought was really important to do, particularly as an artist, because I think where, you know, for me, it, art has to do with, uh, you know, mapping history and even, uh, you know, uh, creating history like this is. So I felt like really responsible to do this because I didn't want, I wanted to, well, there's a number of reasons, but I wanted to uh, have this so people will not forget what it was like down generations from now to tell them that toilet paper was a commodity and people were hoarding it and, and the stores were sold out. And, and that's, you know, how uh, mundane, it, well, not mundane, but from mundane objects, things got. And the scarcity of toilet paper. And uh, so I started um, each time I finished a roll of toilet paper, I was marking it and it was very catharsis for me to do this and I will do it. I have it behind me. Uh, I will continue to do this until the ban pandemic ends, whatever, how many years it might go on for. And um, I did think um, about, uh, so for me each week or each how, how many, you can see some of them I used it, six days, some were four days, some were five days of roll, some were bigger rolls, smaller rolls. And um, it was, it, it said a lot, a lot about the fact that um, it, it was like a gravestone for me. Each one was like a week went by, this period went by, we're, we're, we're getting through this. So, um, that was on a per, more of a personal level for me, although a lot of people could relate to it. And I did think about doing them in gold because I use a lot of gold leaf um, in my work, but I decided that I really wanted to keep it at what was at hand at the moment. And there was not much available at the moment. Um, so I kept it, to the actual item of toilet, you know, the toilet paper roll. And, and just right from the dates, I just, I, I, I felt that, you know, because I was trapped in a tiny apartment and a lot of us that were, you know, in the city who didn't have, the, who didn't have the luxury of escaping to, you know, upstate or the Hamptons or Florida, that just with the dates, I just remind me just, I remember marking my days from, um, there were 24 hour cycles that were marked by the, was it six o'clock um, salute to the um, essential workers. Yes, essential workers. And, and, and I just knew, and I, I remember I was working nonstop and I was just constant, I was just focused on work, 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 work. And that was the one thing that, that marked the passage of time for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, yes. Um, it, it was something for me also, and it was something I looked forward to actually, because it was a way to connect with people out my window, you know, and it was uh, also a way of showing appreciation and support. So it was, a, I, I also, and I remember when it stopped, I remember, or it started calm, uh less people were there uh, clapping and then it went to nothing, you know. Yeah. So it was, that's, that was interesting also to uh, have that happen. But I, I did a, a number of pieces with marking of what's going on and what went on. Yeah, and I felt like not just a connection with my neighbors, but also just a release. 
you know, it just reminded me of like being in the dorms when I was like a freshman and um, during um, during finals week and everybody's studying like at midnight, everybody would just scream out their windows. And I kind of took it as the screen. I kind of treated it like the screen. You gotta get binoculars during the show. <laughs> <laughs> the second this happened, the first thing I ordered binoculars. I'm like, you know what? I'm stuck inside and you look at everyone else's sex, like, fuck it, you know? Did you learn a lot more about your neighbors? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the the bad- losers, yeah. <laughs> Someone has a really bad interior decorating style and someone like loves working out. That's pretty much it. You know, <laughs> a lot of gamers, but whatever. Yeah. Um, do you, everybody has that one naked neighbor. Uh, I like five. They're disgusting. It's good. <laughs> well, let's go to the next piece. Um, that's right. So the, um, the future of silence. And for some reason, this means this mean um, this ends up meaning something more different to me every time I see it. So that's interesting. Um, and just like what, like the black sludge, like I guess with wax, but I always imagine it to be, um, you know, I mean, for one part of the pandemic, I thought of like just the disease and the virus, but also just thinking of, you know, just the last administration and just like, just the muck from the swamp, <laughs> you know, just, well, we're just the rot. <laughs> but we, we've learned, and there's a lot of talk during this pandemic about silence being uh, non-action, not, it's, 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 well, actually it's not non-action, it's a killer. It, it is a form of action being silent. And, um, you know, it, it's really interesting. There was a number of pieces I started in 2019 and finished it during the pandemic and they took a turn. They took it, you know, there was a change. And this is one of them um, that I finished in after the, when, after the pandemic. And with the rioting, rioting, rioting that went on, and the protests, uh, and uh, the administration that we have had, not have, luckily, um, it, it took it did take it. It had it, it became more dimensional uh, during the pandemic, and it allowed me to finish it. And uh, Arlene, can I say one thing? Sure. Okay, because like I think it's interesting because like the way you're describing this, like I, you know, art, the whole point of it is like it's open to interpretation. So if I, it's kind of cool because when I'm looking at this, it sounds stupid, but you know, when you think about like the vessel, I kind of think about it as like the human, like where are vessels and shit, you know? It is a vessel, yes, like a death. Yeah, but it's funny because like during the pandemic, I realized how disgusting I actually am, <laughs> you know, like how gross we all can get like in our houses and whatnot too. So I don't know. I, I kind of relate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, my, you know, my, even though the work could be strong, it that I do, it's also leaves a lot of room for other people to come in and bring what they, which oh. I want. You know, yeah, I don't, totally. you know, I really don't want it to, to be. Oh, and not that there's anything wrong with flowers. This is a flower, it's pretty, and everybody's gonna look at a flower and <laughs> think, that, right? similar, think very similar things. That's yeah. I just don't want that. I yeah. really, it's it, it's participatory my work and the view is very important and, totally. and I want people to experience what they experience from it, but I also want to say something. So there's a you know, there's a duality that's happening. Okay. Um, I have a question. What the vessel reminds me, what is the vessel? Is it looks like an urn to me? That's how I'm reading it, but so it uh it so they do represent to wow. me represent to me an urn, but they are a uh martini shaker. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking it's Hell like, yeah, now like, it's an urn or a cocktail shaker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. when I saw them because I've used them in a number of pieces. It was uh, 2016 and I bought what the store had and it reminded me of Death of America. And uh, I have a piece zero to 2016 with this shape used. 
and uh, because that was the beginning and the end of uh, our democracy for four years or more. <laughs> so, and then I think, you, and you have one that we don't have pictured of them in a row. And I was just, it reminded me of, you know, just the number of people that died of COVID. Yeah, well, I, I have represented uh, that in numerous works. I even did that during 9-11 with a piece that I did, um, Infinity, and, uh, and with these urns do, and the skulls that I sent you a picture of represent people that all died. Um, and these urns re definitely represent death. But it could also represent death of one thing and renewal on the other side. So because there's all you know, there's always death and then there's renewal or rebirth or something else that comes. Yeah, out. like the tarot card, death means rebirth. I so see. something new. Okay. Um and I think we have one more piece from um of yours. Or is it one or two, um, Esme? Uh, this is the one we included. Okay, so um, and you did a couple of pieces with um, with the biohazard yes like, um, symbol, and I love you know symbols, icons, you know just that one symbol, you know, and just like just very Terry Gilliam. Work. Make your pardon, Terry Gilliam. It's awesome. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like the guy who did Brazil, it just reminds me of him. Like, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I haven't thought of Brazil in so long. <laughs> I know. I watched it on my period the other day. It was very good. So yeah. So, but just these, but just these um, symbols, like you know, just you know, and just distilling something down to the icon, um, and you know, do, where they become like just they became pandemic memes, like the toilet paper, like everybody recognized, everybody has like a, a gut response when they see something has to do with toilet paper. Um, right. That and uh, remember Ruben Natal San Miguel's one when they had all of the rolls hoarded in the window. Like, yeah, I love that piece, yeah. And, um, and the biohazard, and I remember, I guess, I remember someone like I think 20 years ago, um, Aileen Getty, she had, um, I met her and, you know, she's, um, you know, big AIDS activist, she was a big AIDS activist and, you know, she was, um, you know, she had, she was one of the first people, you know, really, you know, fought through the, sh um, the stigma of having, um, of having HIV and then, um, and she tattooed a biohazard symbol on her oh, Really? Wow. Yeah, and I remember meeting her, like, um, a couple of decades, um, years ago and just, um, was a so fascinating. Yeah. And she's just like, this is it, you know, it is what it is, you know, and she, yeah. um, and it was something that never let her, and this, it's very David Wojernowicz too, in a way. It's very what? I'm sorry. David Wojernowicz. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. You know, he sewed his mouth shut um, during the AIDS pandemic. He was like um, very tight with Paul Tech. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of that because this is also another pandemic, you know. That's, in but, that's interesting. Yeah, his work is so strong. Yeah, but it's also like a very Mobius vibe, like the the bald head and whatnot. It's like that movie, Fantastic Planet. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's like an animated movie from the seventies. It's yeah. kind of yeah, but it, sorry, I'm like being referential, but I like it. It reminds me of those things in a good way, you know. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, and also just it also just kind of reminded me of the silence. I mean, you were talking about back before the last one, like, you know, silence and you're talking about silence is death and, you know, it's the black mask and, and it kind of has that. And it's a feeling of death. It's a, but all, you know, feeling of death, but also a feeling of like someone like, it was like the silence, like, you know, yeah. how about not even be able to speak freely about, you know, the pandemic, yeah. you know, our government and stuff. It just, it, it just brings a lot back to me mm -hmm. and the iconic gold, you know, your gold head, like that is actually your head. That's actually me, yeah. And um, so, and let's go to the next one. And this, I saw this piece, uh, Linda and I saw this and it's like, this is it. Yeah, this just says it all. So, um, I think this was from a New York Times spread. Yeah, is that correct? I, 
it's so funny. It's like the New York Times asked me to do something. This is what I give them. It's like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> but no. uh, yeah, they asked me to do something about like um, the financial crisis that's going on with the pandemic. And I was like, well, it sucks because the Venice Dolphins weren't real. You guys remember that shit? Everyone was like, wow, like no one's going into the Venice Canal. So all the wildlife's coming back. And, like someone leaked this fake bullshit. I like totally bought it when I found it was fake. I was like, so bummed out. We all shared it. Everyone shared it. And we yeah. were like, yeah, something's good coming. Something oh. good. Nature's coming back, you know. Um, <laughs> funny. It's like you can't really tell because this, like, this is like um I do mock-ups and shit for my paintings, but um this was like for an editorial. So like I actually make paintings, right? Um, and they, I wish they looked this good, but whatever. I mean, how can I share the screen? Huh? How do oh. I do it? I'm dumb. I just have to Google it so you guys can see it. Okay. Wait, hold on. Sorry, guys. Sorry. We have to. You gotta let me do it. Do we have sharing enabled? Okay. Um, I can make you the host, and then you are able to share your screen. Okay. Youporn.com. I'm just kidding. Okay, you're a host now. It says. Okay, cool. Here, look. Okay, so usually the shit I kind of do is like this. Here, I'll show you guys just because it actually does help. You can actually see what the work looks like. Cause that's a different kind of piece, but um, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, guys. It's super yeah, like it's, can you guys see me? What I'm showing? Oh uh, no, not yet. Okay, shit. On. <laughs> Sorry. Technical support. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez. So I'll talk about a little bit about the piece we're doing it. So I loved yeah. it because. Oh yeah, and we have, is this your next exhibition? Because we do have some, we're also going to show um, oh, a couple pieces okay. from Savannah yeah. as well. Yeah. We can just show that then, it's fun. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you have to cancel. You have to okay. Stop, stop share, got it, I'm back. Okay, so the only, uh, so I love this one because it just, uh, we go back to the dolphin. Yeah. Um, uh, Jamie, would you be able to make me the host again? Uh, you have to click I don't on think so, yeah. <laughs> so, but also just the OnlyFans thing, because it was just, oh, I remember every, I mean, everybody was talking about OnlyFans. Um, but didn't Beyonce, Beyonce put, um, did a line, in, um, did a verse in a remix of um, Megan Thee Stallion Savage. Yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Like teasing, um, Bella Thorne. Oh, yeah, that was so you know, fucked up. Bella, Bella Thorne um, got an OnlyFans and got dragged because she was a Hollywood actress who's yeah, like she need the money, you millions. Know? Yeah, and OnlyFans was a place for sex workers. One of my best friends is a sex worker, right? And like she, whatever. It's oh shit. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> she, okay, she like basically like, all the shit. Like they, that's how my friends. They're a couple. They're married. Um. And that's how they made their money during the pandemic. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, holy shit, like, cause she can't go to the strip club, you know? So it's kind of fucked up. I thought it was funny. It was like, kind of like a fantasy of what you can do. You know what I mean? But, and it was, it was great. People were surviving, you know, and thriving. You know, that I, I, I literally, if I had OnlyFans, they make like wooden nickels with $2. <laughs> <laughs> like a bag of bone shaking. No one wants to see that, you know, but uh yeah it's wild to me it's like because i have a bunch of like i mean i have dumb memes from that i thought were kind of relevant but keep you can keep doing your thing sorry i'll shut the fuck up oh yeah but i mean it's just like it was the perfect meme just it combined just the two things that were just totally like meme worthy and yeah and talked about just the and this i think captured like the early pandemic because it's funny the new york times editorial it was everyone else's shit was so dry and so long-winded it was like fuck it just take this we already know what this is, you know what I mean? <laughs> and like, keep it simple, stupid, you know? Because everyone, I feel like right now, everyone's spiraling out of their, their head anyway. Like we're all kind of like super insular and like, you know, like it's funny, like during the pandemic, it sounds dumb, but a lot of people like, you know, everyone's staying at home at different times of the day than they're used to, right? So I'm at home in my apartment right now. It'd be like three o'clock or something, 3 p.m. And they hear some weird noise. And everyone thought they were like, their house was fucking haunted during the pandemic, but it's because we're paying more attention to things, you know? So it's kind of like, um, I don't know if anyone else felt like that. Like, I'm like, shit, this thing is deaf. My apartment's like fucked up. Well, I think everybody realized they didn't like their apartment. I've seen so totally. many, so many home improvement projects. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys a game changer real quick. Hold on, hold on. They're going to bang me. Look. Okay, just showing you really quick. This is actually important. You know what these things are? They're called cord hiders. 
Oh, yes. Have you hidden all of your cords now? Does it look no. all minimalist? No. They're just like stuck to the wall. It's like some like crab and solid wood or something, you know, but it's fine. But like, you know, when you go to like a rich person's apartment, you never notice electronics. It's because of these fucking things. I'm telling you. That's why I did it during the whole thing. Yeah, but I have so many projects that I started and haven't finished. Yeah. Like I have um I have a bidet attachment that's like <laughs> I tried oh, yeah. to, I tried oh, yeah. to install. It got too hard. I tried to get maintenance to do it. They it gave it up. It's in the box. It's never going to be installed. It's in my so many. Box. I have so many half half finished projects. That's so awesome. I'm looking at this one, and I was thinking of um, your kinetic sculpture. This is a piece. Is this um, this is for an upcoming exhibition? When does this open? It's open now, it's, but. During because it's COVID, the shit's closed till twenty seven. But it's Kunsol Savinger in Norway, and oh, they have a video of it. I never. Yeah, we have the video. You see it on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the kinetic sculpture of um, you know, of the cups reminded me, you know, the repetition of the of the everyday object. Yeah. Uh, so reminded, yeah. Um, it um, I saw the connection, you know, with, you know, with Arlene's and the repetition of the toilet yeah. paper roll course. Totally. But it's also like, it's funny because it's like a really low brow version of like tentacle porn, but also it's, you know, it's like solo cups shit, you know, when you play, like, <laughs> you know, but it also, it's funny. So um, this thing is playing, you know, that song, I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt. Yeah. That song's playing. This thing sounds like it's breaking constantly, right? But on the other side of it, there's um, this video by Carol Pell, who's like um, a painter from Cobra, 70s. He's like super like, bro we paint her like she's going like Choo, it's a like super abstract shit so that's playing across from this so it's kind of like this bro thing but it's also like almost like false arctic Rivera because in, in the other part of the room you know it's on a platform which is elevating it even though it's like a dumb object you know it's like a really dumb smart idea um but there's also like a rocking chair with a big pile of hay on it so it's also super american but super like art referential at the same time but i just thought it was kind of good that these kind of like solo objects because like I think during art shows right now, like you look at one thing, but I think it needs to be somewhat immersive because people aren't leaving the house, you know. And if we're gonna leave the house, you need to see something that's interacting with them, you know. Yeah, and this one definitely, you know, makes the connection, you know, with the um, with the audience. Yeah, I mean, it almost like hits that little girl, but it's okay. <laughs> well, I think that's what makes it funny, but. Uh... <laughs> um, and then um, I think we have a couple of your paintings. Oh God! Okay, there we go. I'm scared. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ, we don't begin all once. This one, it's funny. It's like, you know, I think all the shit that I was making during the pandemic, it kind of was subconscious, but like, I was either going to put an old person on there or I was going to put, you know, like the BG song, like, uh, More Than a Woman, how people misinterpret it as bald headed woman. <laughs> that or the other one was, It's my house and I live here. But I thought the old person was good, you know. Kind of like I've been watching a lot of Doomsday Preppers, so. But it's kind of like it's it kind of for me it was very reminiscent of like Gober in a way, Robert Gober, but like trashier, Gober. So is this still in the in the in the range of like disaster memes? Yeah, kind, kind of. That? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't. Eat. I mean, you should see the shit I eat at night. It's crazy during the pandemic. It's, I joke around. I call it human alpha. It's like mashed potatoes, canned peas, gravy, and like white bread. It's like prison food. But so it's kind did, of like when did you um when did you make uh, like when did you make this? I want to try to set this in time of like the production. Like three months ago, four months ago. Oh, so this is still like pandemic. So yeah, you're, no, dude, you totally. you've gone down the rabbit oh, hole. For the most part. Oh, so you've gone down the rabbit hole like we are like in oh, yeah. the apocalypse now. <laughs> No, I know, like, I should have been painting more, but I was like, fuck it, whatever. But, like, there's, like, half the show is new stuff. Half the show is old stuff. So. And is every piece called, is every piece titled, like, the name, like, the try explaining how you feel? No, I don't know what the fuck that's about. I, I, yeah, exactly. that's, like, that's how we found, okay, so what is the title of this one? That's a great question. I forget, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no clue. I had to do it, like, cracked out, you know, like, last minute. And then, um, and then there's another one of your paintings that, I mean, and I love just, it, it just seems everything is like this, it's like, 
it's like you've caught, you know, you've really captured like, you know, like the art of the meme. Well, it's funny. It's like everyone always talks to me about like post internet and whatnot. But for me, I just like immediacy because I think that that's something that people relate to immediately, you know? Not only is it like democratic, but it's like, it doesn't, there's, because there's, also the reason why I use acrylic and I use airbrush and whatnot is because there's not really a history there, you know? So it's almost like it negates itself, if that makes sense. So it kind of, it almost becomes timeless in like, um, a really fast forward way. That's how I like to think about it. And also it gives me, I mean, I, I think Warhol, you know, with Warhol's- uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I had own a printing, uh, like a giant print company. So I grew up right. in a pure factory. So or I, a relationship with the advertising industry. Exactly, I mean, that's what my parents do. So I grew up in their factory in Newark seeing these, these images being reproduced over and over and over again. And just because something exists once doesn't mean it's garbage. It means it can have a second life, a third of life, a fourth of life. So like basically everything I use is appropriated from other things. And then I like mash them together. Like I always joke around, but it's like an arranged marriage that doesn't want to happen, you know? <laughs> Cause they, they function like car accidents or bad TV, you know? Like you, you don't want to admit that you like them, but for some, it's like rubber neck. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it, it, um, I, but I mean, but they are the immediacy because they do just like, you know, it's like right smack in your face. It, I was reading the Andy Warhol diaries. Like, uh, it was actually the best bathroom book my parents had growing up. It's like this big. And he would write down everything he did every day. And basically, one, it was like the second chapter. He says, when people look at art, they literally make up their mind in like 3.5 seconds. Uh, John Berger says the same thing in Ways of Seeing, right? Also, but when people make up their uh, minds about people, it's seven seconds. So you have to think how uh, low of attention span everyone has, you know? So you kind of want it to do the, I want to cut the fat out of it. So it kind of does the job for you because I feel like people, especially when looking at art, I feel like people already have like really difficult lives and they're thinking a lot about stuff, their own lives. So I'd like to make it easier for someone else and they can just engage with it the way they want. But like this style of painting, you can kind of just understand exactly what the fuck is going on. And then you can just figure it out yourself, you know? It kind of dictates it instead of like being totally up to interpretation, if that makes sense. But I'm, I'm seeing a lot of things during the pandemic that have, you know, with, you know, just fresh materials, immediacy, um, me where the, um, there was, oh, it was a company gallery. It was stuff done with um, these resin sculptures. And oh, I think it's my friend. <laughs> oh, look, um, wait, the sweet, oh. Swedish? I'm thinking someone else, but go ahead. Oh, no, she did. The BDMS shit? Huh? BDSM looking shit or no? Mm, it was kind of like um, two, um, it was um, two women, married women who were melting into, like merging into the same person. It was all done, like it was these really glossy resin, uh, resin sculptures. Kasha, like, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, she, she's like one of the owners of it. Yes, um, I think she's the owner's wife. Blonde girl. Right. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were just like kind of melting into each other from lockdown, just melting, you know, like the wives were melting into, into each other. They were melt, turning into their pets. And, yeah. and it was just too real. Uh, but, but it was just like that in your face immediacy and those, um, and the materials just really just like brought you into their world. Like yeah, into yeah. their apartment, like you, you just, and and just that heightened anxiety, and you know, and 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 just that hyper focus, you know, as we, you know, being all trapped and looking at things through screens. Like right now in Zoom, we're just hyper focused. I know. I need to look other Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really um, okay. So we did get the title to this one. So this was two adaptable utensils. Oh yes, okay, I actually like that title. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's Thanks. hilarious. Thanks. And then we have another one. I'm really afraid of this one. Oh, I wanted to ask, but I, I, you know, like when you want to ask, but you don't, you don't want to ask, so. Show me, show me. <laughs> this one. Um, Charlene, you only wanted to include this one, but I can find the picture of the one that I know oh, you're talking well, about. What was, there was the one with the, oh, I thought we were in, the, the one with the dog in the toilet. The pink toilet with the creature oh, yes. coming out of it? Shit, I can find it now. Um, let me find that for you, Charlotte. Okay. But um, 
Yeah, it was well, I mean, we don't, I mean, it's because it's, it's kind of about poo. We can make it do it quickly. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it really quick. Yeah. So I'll just explain what the thing is while she finds it, while Esme finds it, or Valeria finds it, Jesus Christ. Um, oh, it's you know, Esme on Valeria's account. <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, yeah. So basically, the painting is like, I literally found this background image on some like weirdo, like illustrator guy's website, which is, you'll see it. I literally put it on the top of the painting. But then I needed something else in it. So I hate myself for referencing David Lynch because I I'm like the art person, you know, like like a punk band's got cool, like I liked it first. I'm like still that asshole. <laughs> no David Lynch, no David Lynch. But I basically took the hobo from David Lynch from the and you know, it's like this shit crawling out of a toilet. So then basically I just thought it was like it needed something else. So I just put the steps in front of it. Cause that's what I was using the whole time to paint the thing. And it's like, you know, very self-aware art for art's sake, you know? Um, yeah, I just like, I just remember I was like, this was just, I mean, it was just kind of look, you know, when you look at a disaster, you know, you know, you know, it's like, I just, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking, but I can't look away, but I, yeah. but I don't, but I don't like, but I don't want to admit that I'm still looking. I know I made this shit in two fucking days, I swear in my life on a shitload of Adderall and coffee. But yeah, it was like, you know, and it's usually not that fast, but I had no choice, so, but and I then, like it. And then quickly, because I think the branding on top, which, which repeats through. Yeah, five, five, yeah keep going, you can, yeah. And we can, yeah, the branding on top. It's so funny, the eye fell off, because I used a vinyl cutter for that. The eye, there was an eye there, and we were like, just really cracked out when we were making it, so like four in the morning. And if you go to this website, instead of like, Whatever it's supposed to be, it's like some family's blog. It's like total trash from the Midwest. So you, and then let's go to the next one. I think there's one more from Stavinger that. Um, ah, Paul Wall. Oh, that's Paul Wall. Because we were trying to figure, which I actually like Paul. We <laughs> do the People's Champ, you know. <laughs> but uh, that's why he's in like it's like the People's Court. But can I keep talking? I'm gonna show you one thing. I, I want to show you guys. It's funny. So like when I make paintings, I do um, mock-ups and stuff, right? And I found it. I found it. That was so fast. This is the actual paper football I made. So I like, glued it onto like a pencil and I like, took a photo of it like this. Shit, there we go. So oh, okay. Okay. So it's not all Photoshop. It's supposed to be a paper football that you flick. You know, he's trying to be like disrespectful in court, you know? Now, is this more collage? I mean, it looks, okay. No, oh, yeah. no, it just looks like there are different surface, it's different surfaces, like his head. No, he looks like a ham. You know, the head, the jacket. Um, yeah. and, and this, um, so yeah, and um, so when, how late is, um, how long does the show run in Norway? Till like June or something, but I can't yeah. even go. Oh. Right. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. And Arlene, I wanted to go back to you on, and also we are coming to your, um, near question time. So if you have any questions, um, you can raise your hand or put something in the chat section. Um, and we'll be happy to, um, you know, discuss some things further. Um, do you, since are we in your studio? The one with the, do you have the coffins? Uh, the one with the coffins, I think we we didn't include that. Because um, I was thinking, oh, there was one with the coffins with the, because I was just thinking you're very, you know, with your iconography, it's very, it's been very fixated on death. But I could, um, yeah, because that's what happens when we're born. <laughs> we're dying moment to moment. Do you want me to, uh, do you have a picture of it or you, on my website or you want me to share? A we did have a picture of it, but we didn't use it. I was just thinking about it again because I was. Um, do you want me to share it? Because I can't move my computer. Oh, okay. But there's one I see in the background. You have the, um, the coffins with mirrors. It's just becoming, yeah, yeah, it's just like a lot of the repetition of coffins. That's as far as. Do you have one, Esme? Or is that? Um, yeah, I will get that for you. OK, great. So basically, uh, Persephone is the one that you're looking at. And I uh, wanted to do it um, 
actually, I finished it right before the pandemic. Let me just think. It's such a blur. But it, uh, I started it. Um, it took me like a year and a half to do the piece, put it that way. <laughs> it's like 63 coffins that are attached with um, every seventh one. Oh, that's uh, Wheel of Dharma. I could talk about that one. Yeah. If you'd like. Um, so uh, this, this was done during the pandemic. And, um, but I designed, well, sort of designed it. The concept was prior to the pandemic. And um, it's uh, based on a Buddhist sacred teaching and um, which values all living beings as being equal. So during the pandemic, I, I found it to be um, very glaring, the, the separation politically and many ways that socio-political environment that we're living in. So um, this represents unity and the pursuit for equality uh, because Buddha valued all living beings as equal. So the coffins has a lot to do with death and seeing yourself in the mirror. And then the wheel, the design of the wheel is the spinning of the of the Wheel of Dharma for it to keep going in lifetime after lifetime. And it, it's also a representation for me of the cycle of birth, uh, life and rebirth and death and rebirth. And it's just a constant cycle. There's no, you know, a lot of people think of life as a beginning and an end, and this is the end after we die. But there is, you know, whether you're religious or not, because this is not a religious thing, but there is energy and that cannot be destroyed. And what is that? And where does that go? And how does that get recreated or find its new body to put itself in, you know, a uh, hotel to put itself into for the time that it's here. So it's um, the other one that you saw every, uh, the one in my studio, every seventh one is, uh, a very dark navy blue. And that represents uh, the, uh, our cells rejuvenate every seven years. So there is, we're dying and re, re, rebirthing, so to speak, uh, every seven year, seventh years, our bodies, our cells die and re, rejuvenate or come alive again. So that's, uh, so I used 63 of them. At the time it represented my birthday, but by the time I finished it, I think I was 65. <laughs> I started it thinking I would finish it, but the piece had uh, many different, uh, it took a long time for me to do. I worked in many different ways. It had color, it had bright colors. It just kept changing. It, the mirrors were coming out, the mirrors were in. It was a real, real process, that piece for me. And um, so, wow, so it's, so is this, would you attribute to, I mean, so does this, I mean, this sounds very Buddhist. Oh, it is very Buddhist, it's very- And um, does, does, um, um, would you say that that is, um, I mean, that is helping, I mean, right now, that is where I'm mean, influencing your practice. Um, and has it helped you cope with, the death that we've been surrounded by, whether it's you know people dying of the pandemic or getting shot by police, you know, we've been surrounded by so much death. I I I, I was a philosophy minor of religious studies. I was an atheist growing up, and um, I always contemplated death, and I always I saw death at a very young age, and I contemplated gravestones and graveyards and what people did with bodies. So it's, as a Buddhist practitioner, it, it definitely talks about death. Everything's impermanent. It talks about losing everything. It talks about different realms that we live in, even in this time. So, uh, you know, it talks about we're living in degenerate times when it was, when, when, 
uh, certain Buddhists did say that they we are in degenerate times. It was even before the pandemic, and I thought we were, but now I definitely think we are. Like there's no, uh, it's like it it got worse, um, and so the 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 whole concept around Buddhism and how they the philosophy of life and the science of life and is very much uh, influences me and answers questions, uh, even though some of them aren't quite answerable in uh, a common way. Um, and um, I, I feel fortunate that I have studied Buddhism for so long and have the teachings, but it's still hard. And I'm as I'm human and I'm like every other human being. This has not been an easy time at all. Oh, and, um, but at least, I mean, it sounds like, and it's, and, um, but I like how, you know, the conversations like, you know, it sounds like, you know, more like coping and healing and um, processing, you know, we're moving into something positive. And speaking of coping, um, um, Jamie, um, how, um, how did you, like, um, where, got, how did you cope through this <laughs> this last year? Like alcohol, um, what else? I taught myself a bunch of stupid shit. Like I taught myself how to sew. Oh, that, that's, I, a, that's, that's a good, that is that is a very useful skill. I call myself making pizza. I'm like, I should just kill myself now. Like what the fuck is going on here? You know, it's like too much for me. But uh, yeah, literally I was like walking five miles in my apartment like every day, like and talking in circles on the phone. You know, it was like psychotic, neurotic shit. But, you know, it's like, you know, it's the same for people you talk to and shit. I, I tried a bunch of different stuff. I tried to like pick locks when I had to pick locks. I had no patience for it. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, spying on my neighbors. <laughs> alcohol. I've been like recording uh, all my conversations with my friends when they come over with like a VHS or like a tape recorder, like a real one. You know, just like uh, chat roulette's really good. Omega's really good because we can't leave the house. Does know? chat roulette still exist? Oh yeah. <laughs> we forgot. I had a birthday party, and I think that was like kind of one of where like, we just decided just uh, after dinner just to see what chat roulette was. That oh, was dude, hilarious. It, it keeps your social skills like this. You know, it's great. You don't have to leave the house. You know, fuck the bars. Do chat roulette. So that's, <laughs> that's how I was doing, you know. But yeah, it's I'm sure everyone like lost their mind like three times during the COVID. So, you know. And and so and also any other coping mechanisms from like um, Arlene, like you know, because I know that it wasn't all like oh my. You know. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> I, I am highly grateful that my studio is three blocks away. Mm. That kept me sane. And uh, I had a number of shows canceled and postponed. Oh, yeah. The work that I was doing for the shows, yeah, I was able to look at it differently and have time to, you know, do it without the pressure of a deadline at all, which I'm not used to. Deadlines uh, suck, yeah. Well, I, I, I have mixed feelings about it. Part of me likes deadlines. Yeah. But... but I and but some of the deadlines, the curators were changing things, and they were saying, "Oh, this is too big. This is too small. I need small. I need. I wanted three pieces. Now I only want one piece." I was like, yeah. oh. "So now time. I was able to work on this work, and it was my savior. Going to my studio every day, Damn. along with my walks, meditating, exercising." I'm the total yeah. opposite of you. I know. I, I got that. I. <laughs> <did not. laughs> You know, I'm trying to lug lug over here. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it is like it is kind of a polar. <laughs> of, yeah. of like I have to say, when you were saying about the alcohol, I don't drink. Yeah. I used to drink, and uh, but I I thought during the pandemic, if I drank, this would be the worst because it, totally. it's just wouldn't make it any better. It's like I, a, I would have to wake up with a hangover or wake yeah. up. Be, be more depressed and totally and what also it's like you don't get to you don't you don't eventually move to drinking alone like you start with drinking alone during yeah, totally. <laughs> like they're I get hypnotized 
for the shit. And I was There's like, no ah. real healthy social drinking during lockdown. It was just you. Know, yeah. 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 I just saw that the whole thing. I, I just would think to myself, because a friend of mine got sober during it, but he, he's that like, seems crazy. But a friend of mine got sober off of it, my walking partner. And yeah. I was really happy because I said to him, you know, because he was drinking a lot. And I saw that and I saw he was like really depressed. I said, you know, you could, you could stop drinking. There are mm. online, you could do. So he actually was sober for quite a number of months and it was so much better and he felt so much better. <laughs> And I was like, great to see, you know, someone, I, I thought it was incredible during yeah. the pandemic to get sober, but um, because it's a hard thing to do. And when you're stuck at home and the isolation, it's really shit, yeah. It's really yeah and it's like, um, um, yeah, having in-person support is not even an option. So that is, a, that is a very big, brave step for someone to take, you know, during a time when everybody's um, heightened anxiety. And how about the window? You know, this is me. I don't think, I mean, like everyone has different coping mechanisms and shit, but I think this is such a weird fucked up thing that we all went through that we experienced, you know, like my uncle passed away from COVID and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's crazy. You can't even have time. Like, it's funny. You think you have all the time in the world, but there's no even, there's no time to even mourn. You can't even have a funeral or any of this shit, you know? So it's like, kind of like, you kind of like appreciate or you look at things differently, I guess. Like I started looking at things differently and, I changed my whole perspective. Now I'm basically, I'm going to open a gallery myself for a year and then go back to paint. Well, congrats though on the new venture. Cause I, I took, I, you know, I needed that time to fucking think. And I'm like, is this making me happy making work right now? Or am I just doing this cause I have to, you know, or because this is like what I do. And you know, I was like more interested in looking at things than doing my own thing, you know? Cause like I'm already self-obsessed anyway, Jesus Christ. So it's a different outlet. It's like, Right. What you realize what's important, you know, or like what the point is during this kind of thing. So you're like, everyone's spiraling, you know, but to, you know, everyone does their shit differently. But for me, I realized like maybe like what I'm doing right now, like I need to be rejuvenated, you know, I don't want to fix that. Everything feels so stale, but anyway, whatever. I'm like, but I do agree, um, just finding some appreciation and gratitude for what we have. I, I think I are alive. Yeah, we had to find something in the little things just to get us through. Oh. Well, we're about to hit that hour. Um, are there any questions um, for the artists or for myself? Um, too sunny now. Do a, hand, <laughs> do a hand raise or I don't think we have any questions this time. I think um, the bathroom so bad, so perfect. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to thank um, both Arlene and Damien. Um, thank you both, number one, for participating in um, Current Undercurrent. Um, I love your work and, you know, for the part of the narrative about, you know, just um, the early pandemic, I think your work, again, your work captured it. Um, Beth O'Grady, you know, says thanks um, to everybody. Thank you, Beth, for joining us again. You've been a great support. Um, and. And once again, you know, thanking Linda Griggs and Sally Curcio for the opportunity. Thank you, Esme. Um, you're doing a great thank job. And, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we will be here next week with two other artists um, with Current Undercurrent, David Rios Ferreira and Jamie Martinez, talking about colonialism and slavery and black bodies and brown no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so um yeah we're doing this again every wednesday um so i'm gonna sign off oh, oh and um Z is it zayed um says um zayed gonzalez um wants to share love from you know love you um is it Julian? I think Jamian, you are amazing. And you are fabulous. And I do want to do give you a style prop as I was talking earlier that I I'm think very professional. they missed casting you in this in the new movie about um, of House of Gucci. I like I very 70s it. Gucci with like seeing the pictures of Lady Gaga during this film. I know Botox two days ago too. So <laughs> perfect, thank God, you know. So but. hopefully that will be the style you you do you look at um, and so thank you everybody and hopefully we'll see you next week bye guys okay. bye. bye thanks everybody